hello, readers and writers. I am Anthony L. Manna, also known as Professor Grandpa Tonio, the book guy and the writing guy. Welcome to Writers on Writing, my podcast series of conversations with new and established authors. Today, it is my great pleasure to introduce you to Susan Powers, a wonderfully entertaining author of the charming, charming picture book, Special Shoes for My Little Feet. In her first pub published picture book, Susan Powers invites her readers to join young Gilbert on a journey that he hopes will help him find the answer to a very important question about himself. And Susan will soon tell us about that. Readers follow Gilbert as he tries on the shoes of four family members and is magically transported to the memories of his parents and grandparents. When you read Special Shoes for My Little Feet, you unite with Gilbert as he receives loving support from each family member and gets the help he needs to find the answer to that big question that sets him off on his journey. What is that big question? Well, hang in there. Readers and writers, you're going to love getting to know Gilbert and his determination to gain a better understanding of himself. Gilbert proves a powerful idea Susan Powers stated in the introduction to her book when she declared that it's the little moments that if, you're, if we're paying attention can create the biggest impact on our lives. That got me thinking. <laughs> now, that's a priceless, thoughtful theme to be sharing with children and their caregivers. Susan Powers lives with her family and two cats, Leo and Orlo. Are they still around? Yes, they are. In Northern California. So, Susan, here you are, and welcome. I'm, I'm, I'm really delighted to be talking to you today about your, your life as a writer as a grand, as a, a grandmother, as you know, wherever wherever we go, but it's just that uh, you know, I start off by by actually asking you when when did you know you wanted to write and and actually publish? Well, again, thank you for having me. I am so thrilled to be here. Um, well, actually, it was a seed more than knowing a knowing. Um, it, some years ago, I was. Um, at work on, on a break and I was reading the last page of a book. And when I closed the book, I heard within myself say, now it's your turn. <laughs> and, yeah, and it was, well, I was shocked, right? You know, and I actually felt it and heard it. And I, I look at it more like a, a seed was planted um, within myself um, because it took many years after that just to develop uh, the confidence to become a writer and all the the stumbling blocks I went through to to get here so yeah it was it was that profound moment that I I kind of knew but it was more of a seed planted that's that's a, a beautiful image because I think what happens is a, a seed of course grows if you water it right <laughs> so you, you talked a little bit about some of the well, I don't know what you might, uh, difficulties along the way. I mean, what, you know, can you articulate that? Uh, a little? Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I had a rough life, a rough upbringing. And so a lot of this book stems from, um, you know, not feeling important myself. Um, and the um, the confidence to you know, say, I can do this, you know, and so I had, um, even though I had stories flowing through me, and I had written tons of no uh, not novel, well, I did write a novel. I mean, I've got writing all over my, my office that I've done, and I've got journals. And it's, it's so uh, apparent to other people that I'm a writer. But to myself, I was like, no, no, you know, no. And it, so it was, it took me a long time to accept um, my gifts, I guess. If yeah, you will. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm so glad you're talking about this because I think 
I think many people, many writers that, with whom I speak, yeah, uh, can relate to that. You know that it's a it's a matter of con confidence, yes, and also self concept. Yeah, uh, you know, and just learning learning to like ourselves. As right. Writers, you know, and um, and I think probably uh, right right now I'm in, I'm working on a story that seemed to have been finished. But when I went back to look at it, I realized it still needs a lot of work. And, you know, every time I approach it, it's like, oh, can I do this? Right. It's those questions, <laughs> right? It's those those little questions that you go, oh, does anybody want to really hear what I have to say? Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, is this good enough? Or... That's it right there. Is it good enough? You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I might as well mention here that one of the ways that I found it to be good enough was or actually making it better was to join a writer's group. Right. You know, and uh, that, that helped me enormously with uh, this, the, the story that I'm, I'm now trying to finish up. It's uh, they, they stayed with me, you know, and they were a uh, very accomplished writers, uh, but also uh -huh. uh, very sensitive. Now I've, I've spoken to some writers who got themselves in writer's group, writer's group, a writer's group where the people were not kind. Yes. And, and you have to be really careful about that because, I mean, you know, you're there for constructive criticism, as we used to call it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and also for kindness. You right. Know, sure all, they can, there, there's always a, a, a kernel of goodness in, in a person's writing, you know, that you can yeah. look for before you start critiquing it in that way that we look for as well. Right. Which is I mean, like, yeah, trying on a pair of shoes, <laughs> trying yeah. to, to see if it fits, you know. Right, exactly. So yes. let's move into this, uh, your special shoes for my little feet. Tell us about the profound moment in your life that inspired you to write your story. So this is a really um, cute memory um, that stayed with me for years. Um, it was actually 2010. Um, my granddaughter was two years old and she was visiting. She came, um, I was in the dining room, kitchen area. And um, she came out into the dining room with my oversized high heels uh, shoes on and she's stomping around the kitchen and she's done this before, but this time she's stomping around the kitchen and she's repeating over and over, I'm grandma, I'm grandma. And, you know, it, it was that moment where, you know, it, the legacy part of the story, you know, I kind of looked at the legacy of she had me thinking, you know, it, the story itself stuck with me, but it, it, there's a bigger story beyond her wearing the shoes. It got me on a journey. It led me into a journey of uh, looking at myself and, and asking questions of, is it, um, is the legacy I'm leaving am I proud of that to leave with my kids and my grandkids, you know, the legacy I'm, I'm leaving behind. And it was, it was, unfortunately it was a re resounding no, I wasn't happy with it. And so it led me on to more of a journey. Um, and then in 2019, I actually started writing this story and it all came together. You know, it was like, that profound moment of her walking out in my shoes and proclaiming that she was grandma, you know, it, it filled me with love, but it also had me looking at myself, right. And the journey and the, the legacy I was leaving for her. And so it just kind of went full circle that way. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, I, I, I read this about you in your website and it was, it really intrigued me because I mean, you would think something like that might just, you know, just end and, you know, right. So she was in your shoes and let's get on with life. But, you yeah. know, that, it really provoked, uh, provoked me. Yeah. Yeah. In, invoked or whatever you want to say about it. But there she was. Yeah. Uh, giving you a gift, really. To, she did. She gave me a gift. Yes. Yeah, to make to make you think, well, it's very personal. And sometimes, you know, I'm also I, I also find it very interesting that writers sometimes draw on a very personal experience mm -hmm. um and if they talk if you talk to them well uh, long enough you find out that that's true it really they come full circle you know they <laughs> sometimes they go back to their childhood sometimes you know they go back to when they were teens you know but it's um 
it's the memory that that sustains them as writers. The title of your book is Special Shoes for My Little Feet. Can you tell listener listeners what does special shoes mean to you? So there's there's an intention behind uh, wearing special shoes for Gilbert's family. Um, uh, special shoes represents all the good things that Gilbert's family does for Gilbert. So um, the book really um, portrays, you know, Gilbert following in his family's footsteps. And, and so for Gilbert's family, and in the beginning of the book, it, uh, Gilbert's dad talks to Gilbert about, you know, we don't just wear ordinary shoes. We wear special shoes because of how important you are. And so that actually uh, is their, their foundation for wearing the shoes is doing good things for Gilbert. Yeah, and yes, and that becomes so apparent as he moves. Well, I say here, uh, there are four scenarios. Yeah where you set Gilbert, your, and he's your boy who carries her, of course, on a quest. What did you want him to, to discover as he moves from one experience with a family member to another? So yes, they, uh, like I said, the, the scenario with Gilbert, he puts on these shoes and they magically transport him back into, um, into uh, past events. And uh, with mom, you know, he goes back and he's already experienced it, but he goes back and he realizes, he finds out that uh, in mom's uh, calendar, she crosses out the whole day just to spend with him. And he realizes that. So that there's just that bond there. And they, and I, I don't want to tell the whole story, but they, they do things together, you know, and, and they create a, a bonding moment um, with uh, grandpa. You know, he he goes back in grandpa's shoes and he really he recognizes the, the workshop right away, you know, as the workshop, you know, and then he sees the car that him and grandpa built together. Um, and, Gramp, you know, there's a lot of uh, moments here where he's learning perseverance. He's learning responsibility. Right. He's learning um, how to take care of things and what happens when you build something or you do something so profound and then the reward, you know, afterwards, what, what, you know, what's the reward afterwards. And so he gets to experience that. And then um, with grandma, you know, it's their relationship is one uh, so special, you know, they, they spend a lot of time together. You know, unlike mom and dads, you know, they have to work and they have to pay bills and take care of things, you know, take care of the family. You know, grandma and grandpa, you know, have already done that and they're spending more time with him, you know, and that they cultivate the family. Um, he has a special bond with grandma where he repeats a phrase that grandma always says, we go together like uh, rain boots and mud puddles. <laughs> so there you know that bond and then with dad it's a it's a different it's the pow moment right it's where the book comes full circle um and it's a pow moment where he actually goes back to not just him and his dad but he goes back to his dad uh his dad's experience with his father so that's where the legacy starts showing up and his grandfather he sees his grandfather teaching his dad all the good things that his dad's been teaching him. So that's just the all that this is the pow moment of the book. And and that's when he gets the the big question <laughs> that he asked. Yeah. That's yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, because I, I, I that leads right into my next question or my next prompt or whatever, because oh, okay. the speaking of adult characters. I got to thinking about uh, parents and grandparents and other adult providers who, who will be reading special shoes for my little feet to their kids. Right. Do you hope adult readers will come to understand about children and their relationship with them? So um, I'm hoping, you know, it's probably already there, but it's just a reminder that um, our kids' importance start with us. It starts with us. It, it's not outside of themselves. It's not outside of us. Um, they're, you know, they're, the kids, um, 
you know, when they're reading the book that I hope they get that whatever we do matters to the kids, you know, but they're following in our footsteps, we're molding them, we're shaping them. And, and, you know, rather it's good or bad, you know, and of course, as adults, we make mistakes, but, you know, you know, keep it in mind that, you know, what we do, our children are going to follow those examples. So um, just, I'm hoping that they get that, uh, that our kids importance start with us. Well, that's nice. Yeah, that that's that that goes back to the idea of the legacy, and um, yes. what, what they can gain, you know, and and that becomes so clear uh, in your book as he moves from place to place. You know, oh, thank you. The adult is a very powerful individual, um, mm-hmm. you know, and um, and the values that your char- your adult characters convey, as you said, responsibility, uh, perseverance, right? Caring. The mother is so caring, you know. As she, right. as she set, you know, takes her calendar out, or as he, he sees the calendar, you know, that's that's a, the beautiful image. One of your book reviewers wrote, "quote This delightful story takes children on an adventure to help them understand their worth and their connection to others." Now, I, I say to you, some people might think these discoveries are way too challenging psychologically for a child Gilbert's age. What about you? Well, okay, so the way I would answer that, if I may just tell you a short little story, I was at an event, and a grandmother walked up to me and, um, and told me that she had purchased my book. And she explained to me that um, her two young granddaughters had been thrust upon her and her husband to raise, and the, the children were, you know, confused, sad, and they felt abandoned. And she said that she read the book, uh, my book, to her granddaughters. And she asked her oldest uh, granddaughter, which is six, by the way, the same age as Gilbert, mm-hmm. um, what she thought of the book, what she thought the message was. And she said, Grandma, the book is telling me I'm important. Mm-hmm. And her grandmother, she, she cried. She was crying when she was telling me, you know, the story that this book couldn't have come at a more perfect time. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know about, you know, much about psychology or psychologists. You know, I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But I, I think kids know when they're loved. I think they, yeah, I think they know when they feel safe. Um, and I think that they know when they feel important. Uh, those are simple concepts, but they're huge, right? Absolutely. They're essential. Yeah, they're essential. And I just think that they know, you know, instinctively from young ages. Sure. That's, that's beautiful. You know, yeah. I, and I mean, I think you know, there's so much we could say to each other because I'm, I'm a, a, parent, a parent and a grandparent. And right. I, I understand, you know, that, that it's... Um, you hear so many stories of kids who feel so dissatisfied because they're kind of pushed aside. Right. And in your book, that's, that's not at all an issue. You know, it's in, he's integrated, uh, you know, and he's welcomed and they're serving him by giving him their time. You know? Right. Time is the big one. Yeah. Time, you know, and my, my son, uh, you know, my two grandkids, one's 12 going on 13, the other one's 19. You know, and my son right now is he's seeing this as so important and it, it keeps coming up over and over again. My job is not as important as my being with them right now. They need me right now, you know, and I'm so happy to hear that, you right. know, because there was a time when he, he just couldn't do it. You know, I mean, there were, there were other things in his way, but, you know, this is it's so good to hear this positive positivity from, right. from parents. You know, I just I just love love knowing that. Well, if, and if you know, I may- yeah, sure. Oh, I was gonna say, if I may, on a, on another note, that's why I added grandma and grandpa. I I, I get that some you know a lot of relationships, um, well, they can't do that because they live too far. But if they live close enough, I mean, that's how come I integrated grandma and grandpa too. So to support the family unit, you know. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. And your story from the woman who was the grandmother who had to take on the responsibility of raising. And you hear that a lot too, don't you? Yes, you do. Grandparents taking on the kids, you know, and 
that's a beautiful story to have answered the issue <laughs> that I brought oh. about, or, the, or is Gilbert too young? Um, I, I'd like to ask you a question that kids often ask me, which is, what's the hardest thing about being a writer and what's the easiest? Okay, so the hardest thing for me is getting out of my own way. You know, we talked earlier about, um, you know, is this good enough? Is it right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, 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 I get in my own way in that, you know, I have a anal, analytical side that goes, you know, this needs to be better, you know, and it just, I need to do it perfectly. And uh, <laughs> we both know that stories, you know, we just start with the story and then we build from there. But sometimes I get in my own way and I, you know, I'm like, well, it's not good enough. It's, you know, it doesn't have this aspect and that aspect. And, and sometimes I just have to just let it flow, right. And just let it go. So wise. Yeah. That's good for me to hear. <laughs> because, <laughs> no, really, because I, I just, I mean, that's why I love talking to writers because they understand what that, right. that this is the flow is all about, you know, and I find myself also getting in the way often, you know, is that, yeah. uh, I want it to be so perfect right. that, I, that I stumble on it, you know, and I think that um, the opening to this story that I'm working on uh, was approved by the writers group. But when I read it, it just seemed very flat, you know, and so I, I started working on it and it was developing momentum. But as you say, I started getting in my way. Right. You know, I, I just wanted it. I had to keep stopping and adding and stopping and adding just letting it go for a while is good. That's why it's also, in a way, I've been, as I say, I've been uh, taking some time to do interviews and it's good to step away from it for a while. Right. You know, and, and just, you know, to add to what you said, you know, editing, you know, going back and editing and, and writing and editing. And, you know, if you're not careful, your story that you started out with, it's not going to be the same story, right? As, <laughs> and you wanted it to be. Uh, right. I, find, I find sometimes putting it aside, like you said, and to walk, walking away and then coming back to it. Coming back, yeah, that helps me a lot. And then the easiest um, is that I have a, um, I have a really good imagination. So uh, the stories flow out of me. So that's easy for me. I I get that there's a lot of writers that get writer's block, and they you know they have to really really focus on trying to get the story, and it doesn't it doesn't seem to happen for me, which is good. I'm glad, but that's the easiest. It feels like a blessing, you know, in that way. Definitely. Absolutely. Of course. Um, you know, when I say, I mean, related to what we're talking about here, you know, a book takes a lot of time, energy, creativity, and patience. Uh -huh. So your, your journey uh, with writing special shoes for my little feet, what was that like the, over that? So are you asking about, the um uh you know did i go traditional or did i or are you asking if i what the journey was like your journey i mean as a writer you know as a writer yeah. um like i said in the, in the beginning of the interview um the it, it was difficult for me because um i was the last one to see that i had the ability to write you know um my my biggest stumbling block is that um, I had always looked at, you know, college students or people with degrees that were higher level than than myself. And uh, although I went to college, I, I don't have a degree. And I and I'm always, you know, I was always saying, you know, well, uh, it's not going to be good enough because I don't have these credentials. Yeah. And um, you know. In school, I had um, a lot of issues and trouble with, um, you know, I was held back, you know, and English and, and writing was my weakest subject. And so those were, uh, I mean, I could have let it all get to me and not write, mm -hmm. you know, just put it to the side. And, um, you know, and when I realized I wanted to be a writer, I was like, well, this is going to be real fun, you know, <laughs> because of all that, all the things that I had in my head around, you know, you know, I'm not a good writer, you know, English, you know, I'm not really good at English and, and grammar and, and all that. And 
um, so I found myself doing what you did. You know, I found a, a critique group. I found some support. Mm-hmm. I found people that would support me in, in my writing. Um, and I, you know, just to wrap this up, this, I, I would find people that support you in a way of uh, them witnessing you. Like they can see that you are good at what you do. Mm-hmm. And, and then telling you that, you know, I mean, it's not like you go out and search for it, but you will end up with people that are, you know, in your critique group, right? They, they love your work and they, they acknowledge your work and they see your work. And so they see you and I, you know, anybody else that's out there having trouble with the same thing that I went through, I would definitely seek out uh, people that are in your corner. Yeah, that's very, that's very good. You know, people need to hear this more often, I think. You know, especially because writing, when you are writing by yourself, is a very lonely, I mean, you're, you know, you're by yourself. Yes. You know, and and you're in this room and you're, you know, yeah. and it's, it's, I mean, I, I find it, I mean, it can be very exciting and very exhilarating when you start coming to, to an idea that really is working for you. But at the same time, to get there sometimes is uh, quite a struggle. Right. And, you know, and, it, can uh, be. it can be. And so I think, um, you know, whether it's a spouse, a good friend or, you know, professional writers, as I was right. to, who can uh, bring bring you along the way. Yeah, my, my spouse was a huge uh, supporter of me and still is. He's my right. biggest fan. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> you need that. Yes. So, so close by. Um, what about your illustrator? The, the illustrations are delightful. Did you did you work together with her? I did. Um, so uh, she's actually on your uh, Facebook, uh, Kim Spangongo. Um, I noticed her. She's one of your friends on your Facebook. Um, yeah, Kim. And she, um, it, it helped that Kim had already uh, uh, published with authors uh, over a hundred books. Wow. Yeah. Over a hundred books. I didn't know that. And she's very good at what she does. And she had a lot of patience with me being a first time author. Um, she also, um, you know, uh, at one point, you know, she listened to my ideas and then there was a point where she gently pried my fingers off of the story <laughs> <laughs> and she said, sometimes, you know, you got to let the illustrator do their magic. Right. And, and I was like, so I was learning compromise, you know, mm-hmm. and um, she was for my first book. I couldn't have asked for a better illustrator. She really well, guided me. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I, I don't, I'm not sure if you know, but I know that when I was working with some of the larger publishing companies, when I did my first couple of picture books, um, they, I had no, no communication with the illustrator. Oh yeah, I heard heard about those. Yeah, you, you might have heard that. That that's so that's very common, you know. And yeah. then when I did Lucas in the Game of Chance, which you know was published most recently, I worked hand in hand with the illustrator, and um, you know that that's an was experience. Yeah, it's new. It was new to me, you know, to be able to, you know, go back and forth with the with the manuscript at that point and, you know, and see what he would come up with. Um, The book, of course, is not a picture book, but it's an illustrated book and that there there are 10 pen and ink illustrations scattered throughout it, you know, that uh, try to bring it to life. But that that collaboration was very exciting, I found. And because sometimes the images he would come up with were far beyond, what the writing said yeah you know, if that makes any sense i mean right you would bring it into a different realm of, right uh, like two different stories going on at the same time yeah right it, it feels that way sometimes yeah um what advice do you have uh for that person out there who longs to be a published writer of children's books so i i think i would go back to the the grandmother's story where when I was telling you about her, you know, I had no idea that uh, my book would touch somebody like that. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, 
for somebody that wants to write a, a picture book or a book, you know, um, go, go with your passion because what you have to say will matter to somebody out there. Like if I didn't write this book, the grandma and her kids would never have read that book and it would never have touched her and her granddaughters like they did, like it did. And so I, I would just suggest to uh, go for it, you know, because what you have to say matters to somebody out there. That's, that's important. Yeah. But, uh, that, to have that kind of confidence in yourself, uh, you know, and also I think um, one thing that I'd like to add to that is, there's a there's also a possibility that you could be taking workshops to improve your skill you oh, know, yeah. and to learn about craft you know there right. are um i noticed that the um the well, let's see now i'm trying to think of what that that organization is called um but, scbwi oh yeah the scbwi is one that's excellent isn't it because they do a lot of workshops they do a lot of critique uh right. reading of your manuscript um, and, and the other thing about SCBWI, which is the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. Right. Uh, for anybody who wants to find it, it's just dot, dot org. And um, you you pay once a year. I think it's like $90. It's just so worth it. But also people forget that there are local chapters. You know, I, I, I'm right here in Ohio where I live. Uh, there's a, a Northern Ohio local chapter of SCBWI. And every year, well, before the pandemic, they did a uh, an in-person uh, conference in yes. the fall. And it was, uh, what a treat, you know, to be, to be, I took one workshop with a person who her whole style is rhyming books. And she talked about the value of rhymes yeah. and for children in particular but also showed a lot of, read a lot of her work. And so it was very inspiring. And right. I think that could be part of it. But craft is, um, you know, you, we can learn craft. Right. Yeah. Also, you know, on our Facebooks, I mean, if you join, uh, like, uh, I forget the name of it, book, uh, book writers and illustrators. I mean, there's all kinds of different groups that you can get on online and, and uh, they have different uh, writing styles and groups that you can join and and learn from. Yeah, the Highlights Foundation too that publishes Highlights Magazine. There, I've seen them over the years uh, develop this. Uh, it's almost like um, a, the, a, just a catalog of workshops. Some of them for a weekend, some of them for two weeks, yeah. some of them are residencies at their at their campus. Uh, you know, and I've talked to several writers who have gone and stayed there. This is before the pandemic. And they would, um, they said they learned so much because they could actually sit down with the published author. You know, they had a one-on-one -on -one during the course of uh, showing their manuscript that they were working on. So they're all, yeah, I'm so glad you're putting it up because there are all sorts of ways, uh, especially in the internet to, um, you know, find, find confidence, find uh, support. Right. Um, when I was uh, preparing for your inter our interview, I learned that you're currently working on a series of picture books. Yes. Um, so I am writing um, a, a new series. It's brand new. It's uh, put it together about a month ago. And I, so I only have two. I plan on having three books. Um, the, the first book is a rhymer book. And it's for uh, children two to four years old. And that theme and concept is the, the child in the box, you know, battle their fears together. Mm -hmm. So, and I, in, and that's a real short book, but it's, it's really cute. Um, and then the second book is an actual picture book. And oh, in the first book, I'm sorry, it's called the box in me. And the series is, it's a box thing. So I miss, I, jumped ahead um so in the second book is called my charlie box and i i don't know why but this book is just touching my heart i actually flipped the the script and made it about the from the perspective of the box <laughs> and <laughs> and it's about a box in a, in a child a little girl and and that theme is you know love and acceptance and so I'm, I'm really thrilled about these books. I, I have them out at 
in uh, with the editor right now. So I'm hoping to get them out sometime next year. And who who is your publisher that you could you said your editor where where is that person? Well, my my editor um, uh, her name is Dara, and she's just uh, an editor I found. But she's uh, oh, she's she's really good. This is uh, self publishing, but yeah. um, uh, my publishing company is Author Academy Elite. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that from uh, my introduction to. Uh, Donna. Oh, Donna. Donna, yeah. Donna Sager. Donna yeah. Sager. Yeah. And she, um, she, I think she's publishing with them. Well, I think right now she's got her own uh, DC uh, ology. Is uh-huh. she, she has her own now. I see. Yeah. But, uh, and how, do, how did you do with this company? How do you feel about them? I um, actually, I think they were like a godsend. Um, because I had no idea where and how to go about doing my own, you know, self-publishing and uh, author Academy lead um, really took, took it far. They, they have a really good format. They, they uh, take you from the concept of the story. They have you do a proposal. It's all, it's like being in school. Literally, it's it's Good. like getting a bachelor's degree by the time you're done, because you end up learning so much about um, the, the writing process um, and then the, the media part and the marketing part. And there's so many parts to it. It's an 18 month uh, program and you have uh, online uh, Zoom calls um, you have with with a. Uh, um, you know, the head people that run, run Author Academy Elite, um, they have guest speakers, they have um, uh, conference calls that you call in if you have any questions, you know, that you can send your story in and they can edit it if you, if you wish. They guide you every step of the way, you know, uh, to printing, the whole thing, the whole thing. Wonderful. A, it was a good, it, uh, Author Academy Elite is, it was a, uh, really helpful to me very nice okay i'm glad i i because we i hadn't thought of asking you that but that's really uh good for people to know if they're self-publishing you know and again you know i I, i'm going to give away my age because i my my I, i really didn't have a background in children's literature growing up uh we there were there were quite a few children in the family we were loved and taken care of but there wasn't very, there weren't books around very much for children to read. Although my father was a sports writer, there was that, you know, and that's, I think I got the inspiration to be a writer from them. But um, I think that I took the first children's literature class I ever took in 1971. So we're going back, you know, quite a few years. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it develop when self-publishing, when that came into vogue, it was considered to be really bottom of the rung right you know why would you want to do this it's going to be a disaster and see what happened was it was a lot of people were publishing poorly written grammatically incorrect well you know this you know and so so then all of a sudden these these self-publishing companies like bublish there's one you know that where they'll they'll take you developmentally through your manuscript or even through your idea before you get a word down you know uh, and uh, and I worked with uh, mascot books. Uh, okay. Yeah, and they they once again I found uh, myself. It was a hybrid publishing company, not necessarily self publishing, but they worked with me every step along the way, and it was uh, extremely personal and also very helpful and very uh, very helpful in terms of some suggestions they made to me about the manuscript. I was delighted. Well. We're coming to an end. I wanted to <laughs> we could go on. I know we could go on. Could I just go on. say, um, readers and writers, go to Susan Powers' website, sdpowersbooks.com, sdpowersbooks.com, and you'll find out why her granddaughter wearing oversized high heels inspired Susan to, to write special shoes for my little feet. Well, she talked about it in the interview. You might want to go and, and actually read about it. You'll also find a summary of the book, 
Susan's blog, downloadable coloring pages, which of course parents and teachers yeah. will love, and a sign up link for parents interested in fun ideas for the family. But by the way, you'll soon be receiving, you'll soon find a recording of this interview in the media section of my website, Anthony Manna, that's M A N N A, Anthony Manna Books.com, Writers on Writing, Podbean Podcasts. Susan, thanks a lot. Oh, thank uh, you so much for having me. It's been a joy um, for spending precious time with me, you know, and uh, I'm, oh. I'm really happy to, to, to see your books when they come out. And I hope that you'll stay in touch and, you know, I let hope. me know, you know, let me know that they're out and that, uh, you know, I could be talking about them on, on my website even, you know, for that matter. But okay. it's been a real delight. Uh, you know, good luck. And uh, as I always say, stay in touch. I will. Let me, let me know how you're do- progressing as a writer and I'll try to do the same. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. You take care of yourself. Happy, happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.